All right, so um, yeah, looks like everything's working here. I wanted to talk about um, more basics stuff, and in this case it has to do with being able to work on on the rough stages of your work. So not so much about cleaning, um, but being able to come up with that rough drawing and the concept of what is rough. Rough means approximate. Doesn't mean sloppy. It means approximate, and it's like making a drawing is like assembling a piece of furniture, like IKEA furniture. But whoops, that's a little loud. But you don't want everything to be all. Um, you don't want if if you're in assembling IKEA furniture without the instructions, you don't want to glue everything down, and you don't want to tighten everything too much, because you may need to move some parts around or completely reassemble the the, the object. And so having a, you know, ha having that in mind, you know, not, it's, it's a drawing where you're not trying to commit too much. You're, you're trying, you're not, you're not going to overcommit, but you do want to get the overall sense of the object. And the other thing about the Ikea furniture that you're assembling is you don't even know what the final product looks like. So what you have is you have the parts, but you don't know whether it's a coffee table or a desk or an armoire or and in fact, you might not even know what the parts look like. <laughs> okay, so so this is the thing. And, and I mean, when you're doing a, a rough drawing or sketch and you have no idea in mind and you're going to be improvising, especially, then you really like are making up the parts as you go along. So this is why it's important to be able to be rough, to be approximate and loose. It's not sloppiness. It just means that you're not committing until you know where things go and in the case of when we're assembling this rough furniture right so in the case of the assembly it's like i'm not i like i might only know that i want an object somewhere off here in the distance and i don't know that it's off in the distance this could be a small object really up close right there's no knowing these things until we actually get a few other things in here right like now that i draw this other object here now we know that it's closer um and you'll notice i'm not trying to go you know draw a straight clean box like that there's this kind of a doodly doodly do like why why do i doodle like that why is it not you know clean and decisive well one of the things about adding doodles is that it adds a kind of detail but not in the way that you think Right, people think of details as drawing eyelashes and eyebrows, and but in the case of uh, like this is this is no detail. There's no information, right? This has information on it. It's not usable information yet, but if I do that, we can compare this line to this line, and we see that oh, it's actually the same kind of object. It's just closer to us because we can tell by the by the frequency of and, and the of the doodles it, it it feels like we're applying a kind of a depth and perspective to this right i can draw smaller and smaller versions of this and it and, and it it feels like it's coming closer it's a spatial kind of a doodle right and this is where we're packing in additional information into our doodles to just say something's far away something's close it's getting bigger you know it's it's this wide we're just we're feeling our way around we're feeling our way around and we just want to get the tangibility of the form. We haven't made any decisions. This is the this is where we are we're working but without committing. It's a, it's work without commitment. So when you're starting out with that blank canvas, right? You are like I can do little doodles off in the distance and I can increase you know, I can make my doodles get larger. Right now it feels like there's where it's almost like we're looking over at an ocean, I can have like lots of little, or a plane of ground or something like that, right? It's that we're feeling that things are really far away and I can, by by perturbing the surface, so I can, by perturbing the surface and adding waves to it, I can say, all right, so we're seeing some kind of lumpy mountains off in the distance and it doesn't have to be straight like that, right? You can start to, let's make it a little steep and, and maybe even overhang, we can overhang a little bit, right? So by keeping the, the doodles small, it, it pushes that particular, um, 
that layer, right? So we're thinking of, of things in terms of these cutout layers, which get closer and closer. We're pushing that layer off in the back by keeping the doodles small, by keeping the scale of those doodles small. But as we move closer and we have these multiple cutout, right? So the multiple cutout layers get closer. I, I have to be progressively more violent with the doodles and, and go lower res, right? The resolution of detail is dropping as things get closer because we're zooming in on it, or rather this, uh, this detail is pushing towards us now. So I can keep pushing things off into the distance and I can, this is, this is how we can come up with quick landscapes. Um, landscapes are, are great for, for this sort of practice because you're dealing with large amounts of space as opposed to figures, which take up a, a, a small set amount of space. The landscape surrounds us and binds us and <laughs> all right. So that, that's why, you know, this, in this kind of doodle, you can push things off into the distance. And then you can you can pull things up on the side and go go big, right? This is going big and close, going big and close, going small and far. Adding overhangs, and this is this is the improvisation. You know, this is the um, how how you can improvise, and it's not it doesn't require extreme accuracy, but it requires a way of drawing that looks loose it has to look like you're not quite committing to it and you're pulling you're pulling what you you know you don't know what you want until you see it so you so it means it makes sense not to commit too much right committing is when you go um you know boom right that that is going there that's going you know there this is this is very this is very um committal even this is kind of loose and you know something like this which is very loose you'll probably wind up pushing further and further later on. And one of the ways you do that is by performing a knockback and the knockback uh, decreases the opacity by 50%. It's like a 50% deletion. So it just, just knocks back the opacity. And then from something like this, now you can zoom in and you can still be kind of like now that you're zoomed in, but loose. So it means that I can say, all right, well then fine. I'm going to, draw something more like this. Maybe I want some kind of opening here. And this is the important thing is that you maintain your loose, your looseness, but you're now working zoomed in. So you're zoomed in and loose and nothing has changed like in terms of your, your workflow and you, you pan around and maybe you want to add some more details and, and you can spend a little bit more time like throwing in, but you've got that framework of that, that loose building. And you can begin correcting. And again, you don't want to be like, you don't have to be. But like the zooming out is like coming up for air. All right. So this is an important thing is that sometimes, you know, you don't want to be spending too much time like zoomed in and doodly doodly because you don't know what's going on. I've lost all context. I don't even know what this stuff is. It's too abstract. All right. So when things start to extract, abstractify and you don't understand what's going on, then you pull back until you understand. So work at the size at which you can understand things. Once the, if you zoom in and things become too abstract, then you're too close. You got to pull out. And sometimes, you know, you zoom in for the control. So this is another thing that you, that happens with a digital workflow is, and, and again, these are just like random doodly doop shapes. The only thing that's not random about them, or the only thing that's really defined is their space and placement and their, their you know, how much space they're using up in this world. That, that's all that is really defined here. I haven't decided what any of these things are. I kind of know that looks like some kind of bridge-like structure and that looks like some kind of doorway. And this is, this is the spontaneous workflow where you're going to create something that surprises you. And I, I don't quite know what any of this stuff is. Not, not very clearly anyway. And maybe I want something that's like, I feel like I want something, some, some bit of payoff like off here payoff meaning something interesting to look at you know the reason to look up there maybe you know i haven't decided right so i'm still kind of working or maybe i want want to keep it kind of going off in the distance like that maybe i want something interesting over there i don't know right so and because i don't know i'm going to be loose about it or i just won't even draw it right so whenever you do know something then you draw it and then you So zooming out is like coming up for air, right? When, when I work this closely, sometimes I start to feel like 
just a little suffocated because I, I start to lose context on the whole picture. So coming up for air frequently is, is an important thing. And when I come out for air, then I look at it and I'm like, okay, but then I don't know what's going on in this little area, right? So then you got to zoom in and then you, you do delete, or you like, maybe what happens when you zoom out, you're like, I know what belongs there. So then you zoom in and you draw what belongs there. And then you have to, again, periodically come up for air because the whole picture's got to work like as, as a, as a whole, it's, it's got to work. Um, the whole, all of the details have to work together, but if you uh, spend too much time, if you spend too much time zoomed in, then you lose the context of the whole thing. If you spend too much time zoomed out or if you're, you're zoomed out and you're trying to draw little details of things that you don't have enough control over, then you, your details just, you can't move forward. You can't push the, the resolution higher and. And then the other question is, you know, what things actually need the detail? Where should you spend your time? And I say, I think my, most of my time probably needs to be spent over where people should be looking. If I want people to look in, in this particular area, then I should be really spending my time here, right? It's like, it, it's, or maybe what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing kind of a, this doorway here and this abstract object is starting to look kind of like some kind of, like, like it's a, a tower of some kind. Right. That, that looks interesting to me. And now I'm like, okay, I think I want, it, it's starting, it's starting to come clear to me now, right? Like the, the, the furniture is starting to assemble itself. And I know that I want people to look, you know, in this, in this area, I want the visual flow to go like that. That's what I want. So now, so now, now that I have my intention, now that I, 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 I know what my intentions are, cause I didn't know what I wanted. Um, and now that I do, you know, now what we do is we start getting the whole drawing to, we start, you know, squeezing it in. We're start going to start going in a little tighter and, and gradually squeezing things um, so that they become what we want. And getting rid of the things that, that are distracting or the things that, that pull us away from what we want. And again, you know, it's like, don't feel, don't go around feeling like you have to make a picture where everyone where everyone knows exactly what's going on at at the very least you are satisfying the problems of spatial perspective and getting people to kind of you know they don't know quite what they're looking at or they they can uh, interpret it you know you can leave that open for interpretation that that's interesting to people because now they start to participate and start to think about what's going on and maybe i can draw a little figure here and maybe it's like i don't know i drew some like dust clouds and these, these almost look like wreckages of some kind. Right? And, and this is, this is the, the, the key part. This is the most crucial part of the drawing is not all the little details later on. Like that, that comes down to a lot of work, but getting that, that interesting composition and getting it so that people want to look at it and want to know what those details are and want to see more. And, and this, this, these are the good bones. These are the, the, the bones of the, the drawing that you the structure of the drawing, the composition that really, you know, makes you want to see what, please draw more, draw more details, tell the rest of the story is, uh, is, is, you know, what this does. And, and this was not planned, unplanned. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't know that it was going to turn into something like this. It looks kind of interesting. I, I'm pretty sure I could spend another two hours, you know, like turning this into some kind of finished drawing, but I wanted to talk about, um, you know, after demonstrating kind of what what we're what what we're heading towards um, with a quick demonstration, is I I just wanted to talk about some of the tools and you know how to develop and this is some of these there's there's probably some, a lot of overlap with some of my other many of my other videos where I would do a lot of these doodle exercises like the uh, the infamous toroid of death the toroid of terror right so you know these kinds of exercises where you're trying to draw these great circles. You know, now it comes down to being able to place and juxtapose these objects in space. So juxtapose something means to take, take, take an object and stick it here and then take another object and stick it there. And, you know, being able to arrange, right, to articulate the, the, the scene. And um, because the articulation is, right, if I putting a big figure here in the foreground, right, you know, now it's like, okay, we don't know if it's a person or a robot or, or maybe it's just a, a, a big mailbox or, you know, who knows what it is, but it's a large object that's kind of overlooking a smaller thing going on down here. Right. And this is 
a lot of composition is just taking objects and sticking them together and kind of presenting to people an interesting diorama. And you've got to be able to work, you know, in a non-committal, loose fashion, somewhat imprecise um, or lacking in, you know, accuracy, but but loose enough that you can still move things around. And then if things start to get a little too tight, right, knock it back and then, you know, knock it back a bunch until you can just still barely see what's going on. And now you can, you can redraw. And I think um, another thing that's important is that you don't, don't like, you need to, you need to avoid and push back the um, the tracing mindset because the tracing mindset is one where you knock it back and then you try to draw exactly a bunch of lines, and that that's a tracing mindset which which you know it just doesn't generate what you want. So I think sometimes what's even better is if I look at the thing and I take off my glasses and I'm just like, okay, well I mean I kind of see something here and and I don't even want to see my own lines too clearly either. So that's another thing is I just want to get a vague picture with not too many details and it's just got it has room for me to go in there and clean things up now I can put my glasses on and I can and I'm wanting to think about where the composition should lead and and so yeah it's like this if we look at the beginning right some of these doodles you'll notice how it looks like a four stack like just four stacks of these of these scribble objects right it's this is what form is form is just the word we use for stuff right and there's some stuff that's over here form placement right there's some stuff that's kind of over here and then there's some more stuff that's maybe over here and it's you know how like this you, you've noticed right this is there's a reason why I squiggle and doodle over it is because this, this there's like tight squiggles and doodles which say it's far away and it's you know off in the distance these big you know, doodly things. These just say it's it's up close. That's all it is. It's a way of just working with the perspective. And the other thing is that because my doodles look like this, right? It just makes it look like it's like facing the camera like that. Right. On the other hand, if I want it to kind of go on the ground, then I gotta apply a bit of a vanishing point to it. So that's why there are. If we look, you know, back here, right? These are spherical blobs this is kind of a sphere blob exercise and it's done in a rough and imprecise fashion so is my music still playing i can't tell yes it is but i think it's just very quiet there we are okay so yeah it's like i can you know i can draw this 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 it's a circle it's not a sphere yet not a sphere until I until I doodle over it, and the purpose of the doodles is to to pull it out and round it out. And maybe I don't want that sphere to be so you know centered. Maybe I'll just shove it over here. I have a lot of like macros on this Nostromo, uh, or I think was it uh, now now the later versions are like Orb Weaver, and there's I know there's an Orb Weaver, I know there's another one. Um, Razor makes them, and. Uh, I also use another piece of software called Pinnacle Game Profiler, which I use to, which you can use to, to set up key macros. And I have auto hotkey. Actually, I'm not even using PGP. I'm using a uh, Pinnacle Game Profiler. I'm using an auto hotkey script, a custom auto hotkey script and TV Paint, which is the drawing software. And and so I've got a lot of like very, very custom corded, uh, cording, C-H-O-R-D. So a lot of corded macros. So this thing does a whole bunch of things. Like if I hold the space bar on this thing down, it pans. But as a cording macro, you know, and the, the reason they call it cording is like in a guitar, right? You, pre, you play two strings at once. In this case, if I hold the space bar down and then I right click at the same time, that's a chord macro for zooming. So I set up a chord macro for panning, zooming. Uh, if I do a double tap and then I drag, it rotates the canvas. And again, if I just double tap, so double tap and hold lets me do the rotation on the canvas. Double tap resets that. And if I take my pen, here's the other thing, right? You notice that if I take my, my pen back and forth, you see the crosshair shows up. If I pull my pen away and I double tap, it it, it 
it it zooms me out so i can rotate zoom in and then i can double tap like that but if i only want to rotate if i only want to reset the rotation i just keep my pen in, in the view <laughs> there's like that's all on a space bar that's all on a space bar so zoom you know pan if i hold it double tap double tap <laughs> all on one button right and then on top of that i have like my undo so space bar and then a and d like w a s d so a and d let me undo and redo and i've got like just all of all of my most often used macros are all on this uh this setup so if people are wondering what program are you using because that looks really like you're working fast and it's like yeah but, but i've corded and made macros over a decade there's like practice oh man there's there's almost a decade's worth of, of macros on this freaking controller all baked into a, like an auto hockey script and and then there's like a, a wacom stub dll that i wrote but you know being able to doodle uh i sorry i keep getting distracted um being able to doodle and make it go over this blob and say here i want another blob here and i want to sculpt it out right so what i have is i've got this ability to sculpt the doodling which is loose like this this lets you you know you want to be able to sculpt and just make blobs of form. You're 3D printing this, these blobs out. It's like you're working in a pro piece of software like 3D, 3D Coat or ZBrush or you know, in, in any or or Blender. And you're using like the the vox. If you're using, well, I know 3D Coat has like a voxel modeling mode where you can just literally make blobs out of nothingness on in CG software. So doing these kinds of doodles really gives you that free form blob creation and that's what i want is i want to be able to just to sculpt this is with with the drawing with the doodling this is this kind of a sculpting way of working and and it's very um it's very it doesn't require commitment it's it's imprecise it's loose and you can create these like blobs of detail it's incredibly useful and and it's fun it's fun. It's fun because now it, oh, it feels like we're in some kind of cavern, and there's like this some, some kind of like ca like a big, you know, overhanging ceiling, and maybe it, it feels like it feels like it's going over. It's like it's a joy. It's a joy to be able to do this, and then maybe we can have some like rocks, like big straight rocks. So we have all this curvy stuff, and then maybe we can have some like some rocks and pillars or something that's maybe a little bit more angular maybe i want to have some kind of like tory gate it's kind of broken and that looks kind of cool right seeing the combination of the straights and then these kind of soft round stuff right like i like that look and then we can start planting planting plants all right and and the way that I draw those plants in, you know, where, how do you learn how to draw that stuff? How do you draw the plants that, that I'll show you, they go all the way back to the first, right? They go all the way back to this first bicycle spoke. So any of you OG watchers out there, anyone who's followed me since like the beginning, you know, knows of this exercise. And so, yeah, this this is this is the wax on, wax off, Daniel San stuff. This is the stuff that lets you create those plants, and then then there's alternation. So alternation is when you small, large, small, large, small, large, right? Or you can do right. These are just quick doodly ways of. Drawing vegetation. So you see stuff like that. It's like ah, now it's like it's a cavern, but there's there's indications of vegetation. And then when you draw a you know when you draw a line across, you can draw a straight line, or you can draw a slightly undulated line with like a little bit of s sprigs of vegetation. It's all suggestive, meaning you know we're drawing something. We're just suggesting to people that we are looking at a you're looking at some vegetation or you're looking at some eye beams or some kind of wooden thing right all of this kind of 
early stage stuff is just there to suggest because you haven't you're assembling the furniture but you don't know what the final form of the furniture is you don't even know what the pieces look like yet you're having to make up a piece and throw it into the picture and make another piece and throw it into the picture and so you need that loose you really need that loose approach um and when you're starting out you know you have nothing so you know when i draw this blob and doodle over it. it's like we don't know if it's a person or a phallus or a statue or you know i know i went there but that that's what it is you just you don't know what it is until you add a little bit more detail but you know how large it is and you know that it's taking up space and and god it's like it's, it, it's such a it's such a phallic shape. Um, or maybe it's a hooded fellow. I'll give him a stick. Adventures of Man with a Stick. <laughs> Isn't there, there is like, I remember there was like a blog somewhere and there was a concept artist who would make these like adventures of man with stick and he would just draw these great landscapes and there'd always be the guy with the stick, like literally hooded figure with the stick in all of them. And this guy looks like, you know, man with stick, stick man. And it, it's, you know, it's something that I guess is it's it's both a it both requires not a whole lot of um I won't say that it doesn't require skill because it is a skill in of itself and it's something that you can definitely get better at it's just it doesn't require a lot of commitment right it doesn't require that you um that you go in there and make everything super clean it's just getting started and sometimes I think getting started is the hardest thing right it's like so many people sit down so many times I've sat down and I'm like, I don't feel like drawing. I don't have any ideas. Oh, so it's a white blank piece of paper. I don't know. It's like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? What does it mean? What does it all mean? Oh, I hate drawing. Right. Usually the first, the first, the first part is like the hardest part. So you know, the first doodles are the hard. So stop making them so hard for yourself. And you know, just pull the thumb out of your butt and get going man like get going because the thing is that you're what you're what you need to do is you need to get your imagination into action and so what you got to do is you got to give your your imagination something to chew on like you know some doodly thing some kind of clouds in this case we're not well you're making the clouds I think that car, you know, I think that cloud looks like Tom Hanks. I think that cloud looks like like a like like a bus or I think that so that's what you're doing is that you've got to be able to make those clouds in the first place. And then the rest of the drawing is just deciding what those clouds actually are. And sometimes if you don't know, like sometimes the only thing you know is is just to make some additional smaller clouds. <laughs> Right? But at some point, you'll start to think, well, are those pillars or are they trees? They could be either. Right? That, that's, that's what I like about this kind of drawing is it's, it's, it's abstract and not abstract in, you know, in like the bad sense where it's supposed to be some kind of, I don't know, pull, some kind of interior sem semiotics allegory, blah, blah. It's not, it's not like one of those things. It's just... It's abstract in, and it's interesting in the sense that, you know, your mind springs into action. Your imagination starts to take flight and it starts to, gi it starts to give you ideas. You know, it's like that's, I think that's an ideal state of drawing is when your imagination is doing the work for you and your imagination is saying, well, I think it should look like this. Here, draw this. Just, just go. Right. So you should be pulled along by your imagination, but your imagination won't start pulling you unless you give it something to chew on first. And that means giving it some doodly do to, to begin with and you know stop making stop making your life so hard for yourself so 
So, yeah, I mean, when you're starting out, yeah, definitely be able to draw those lumps. Draw another lump. You know, be able to, to, to control, like, some kind of statue. Some kind of weird bulbous thing with man with stick. <laughs> another man with stick. There we are. And he's on some kind of, looks like some kind of Cthulhu-esque statue. And maybe somewhere off in the distance are other men with sticks standing on Cthulhu-esque statues, like, off in the distance. That man has a tremendous stick. <laughs> Say that five times fast. And so, yeah, like the, the hardest part of drawing is just getting that first drawing out. Like, I look at all these drawings I have. Whew. Actually, trying to beatbox while drawing is a lot harder, so. And of course, trying to do this while talking is doubly hard, but I've been doing it this whole session. And you'll notice how I've just used repetition, right? I've repeated this with that, with that, with that, and I've just. Trying to enforce some kind of shape here. Stop making it harder for yourself, Mark. But that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Some kind of overhanging stuff going on up here. Again, sometimes it's like, I'm just happy. Like, I don't even want to have a, a finished drawing out of these. It's everything always have to be a finished, like, you know, does it, does it always have to be some kind of I don't know. Right? Like, I'm, I'm just happy that it's like, this was interesting to me. It's visually interesting to me and I don't know what it is, but I like it. And it's got some composition and it's pulling my eyes in a certain way. With a man with a stick. Man with stick. Always, man. There's always room for man with stick. The man with the tremendous stick. Yeah, let's add some vegetation. Has to be small, though. Maybe some straight objects. All right, some straight angular stuff to go along with all this roundy, roundy stuff. And again, I don't know what any of these things are. I'm just, they just look interesting. They almost look like ships. So it's like some kind of harbor, a harbor. Arr, shiver me timbers.
Yeah, but keep the drawing loose. You know, there's no need to make the drawing as tight as a fish's arse. And I guess that's the other thing, right? Like one of the reasons why it's good to look at, you know, reference and that stuff before you draw. And I don't like to have reference up. Like I have this other screen and I could throw reference on there, but my problem with having reference on the screen is I want is that when there's reference or pictures or anything like that on the screen, I wind up wanting to draw what I see rather than drawing what I saw. That's that's like a, a Kim Jung Gi thing. Um, he said something like, don't draw what you see, draw what you saw. And that means that when you're drawing this picture, right? And you're drawing and you're looking at the canvas, you know, your mind is in that area, right? You're drawing what you saw. Whereas like, if you're looking at a piece of reference or you got like nude ball in front of you or something like that, you know, you're, you're drawing what you see because you look at that, the things there, you look at it and then you draw and you look at it and you draw and then your brain is kind of split into two places and you're, you're, dis you're distracted. You're distracted, so it's good to look at a lot of interesting things, you know, beforehand, and just get a, a half-remembered, dreamlike picture, an idea of it, or maybe you do sit down and you do an actual study of it, just to get rid of the novelty of it, and then it's simply to put it within that library of into your imagination library. People call it the visual library, but to put it into your imagination or into your memory, so that your imagination has something to call out and to stick here on the canvas anyway i'll talk to you all later uh, i think we're coming to the end of this